Hey guys, welcome back to Woodland Bakery. It's about to get crazy up in here. What you're looking at on the table is, uh, <laughs> it was me for a minute, and what you're looking at on the table here is nothing too impressive, but trust me, it's going to get there. Uh, stick with me, it's going to be a lengthy video. I'm going to show you how to make the world famous Woodland Bakery Yule Log. Um, if this looks familiar to you, we just filmed how to make this chocolate roulade cake. Jason said, what is it called? Chocolate Rolades? <laughs> you might need that after you're done eating it. Um, but no, it's not chocolate Rolades, it's chocolate roulade, also known as a jelly roll cake because of the uh, style of cake that it is. It's a very thin cake and it lends itself very nicely to rolling it up jelly roll style. Okay. Um, so go check out that video if you're interested in how to make this recipe. It is also found on woodlandbakeryblog.com. And I did mention in the making of that recipe that this type of a cake is uh, like a Genoise style cake, a, a very uh, light foaming egg cake where there's not a lot of fat in the recipe. It's not your typical cake recipe where it has uh, butter and oil and things like that. So a cake of this style um, will want to have some simple syrup brushed onto the layers before we go ahead and fill it with whatever flavor we happen to be filling it with. So um, this is a bit of a building on recipes here with Woodland Bakery, guys, and if you know anything about how I do things, um, sometimes to make a fabulous dessert, such as a Yule Log for your holiday table, you will need to commission a few recipes um, to get there, in which case we need the chocolate roulade cake, we'll need the simple syrup, we also... Uh, for this time, I'm going to fill it with some chocolate buttercream. Now, of course, you guys at home wouldn't have a big 10-pound bucket like this, but um, I do provide all of the recipes on woodlandbakeryblog.com. On the table, you'll see I have some meringue mushrooms. And a few weeks ago, I was getting ready for this video, um, and I showed you guys how to make the meringue mushrooms. So you're going to have to get that together, too. So there's a lot of different steps that need to happen before we pull off the uh, roulade in, in its finished form. In addition to all of those things, you're going to need a recipe of chocolate ganache. This is my simple ganache recipe um, that's perfect for glazing this cake. So now that you have all of those things together, what we're going to do is take our chocolate buttercream. I think on the blog, um, and actually what you see on the table there is one that's been finished with um, mocha buttercream. So really guys, it is your choice, your preference as to what you want to fill this with. I typically do chocolate buttercream or mocha buttercream. It's just my preference. Um, and a lot of people don't like to do the chocolate cake. They prefer to do a vanilla roulade, which is your option as well. So you saw that I brushed on the simple syrup. Now I'm spreading a thin layer of chocolate ganache. And what you're going to want to do is just get this cake rolling. Let's get it rolling. So what you'll want to do is start to kind of pry it off the parchment paper that it was baked on. This is probably the trickiest part of it. And why, if you watch the making of this actual cake recipe, why I do spray the cake. Uh, I mean spray the parchment paper with a little bit of that pan spray as some added insurance. So as you see, I've gotten it started here. And then I could use this paper as um, just really some help into rolling it up. You see how that happens? As I'm pulling the paper away, the whole cake rolls up, just like that. Hmm. So what I do at this point, though, is I just keep it rolled, and I want to place it into the freezer. It's going to help me um, to be able to work with it a lot better once the whole thing is frozen. And at this point, guys, you can just simply leave it in the freezer if you want to get ahead on your holiday desserts. At this point, you could leave this in the freezer for, you know, up to a couple of weeks. And then, like, right before Christmas, right before your party, you'll take it out and then you'll proceed as I'm going to show you now. So, I have one in the freezer already. And like I said, it's it's for no other reason than to either get ahead or to um, make it just easier to work with. All right, so let me just peel off the paper the rest of the way. Oh, 
let's get to do some messy work here. So I'm going to add some gloves. Now, what we're going to do is cut off the edges of this log jelly roll cake. And that's going to become like the little knobbies on the cake that you see on the table. And that's what actually helps it look like, um, you know, the actual log. I like to cut off the edges because um, they're, sometimes they're a little bit dried out from the baking of such a high temperature cake. And then I get to snack on that. <laughs> and then what I can do... There's here, always an ulterior motive, always, right? always. Never goes to waste. That's what gets you through this whole recipe because it is time consuming. So what I do, I like to cut this part, as you see my knife is on an angle. See that? And I'll do the same thing over here. And it doesn't have to be anything um, perfect. You could cut it any way that you guys like to. Take a little bit more chocolate buttercream as glue and glue that right on top. I'm going to transfer this actually to my uh, cake board with the turn stand. And now I can glue on my other little piece here. Just like that. It's starting to look like a log already, right? Yep. All right, so with more chocolate buttercream or mocha or strawberry or whatever it is you guys decide, um, it doesn't have to be exactly what I'm doing here. It could really be anything of your choice. So feel free to do it with um, vanilla cake and lemon. Um, really anything you like. Well, maybe not lemon because we are going to cover it with a final icing of ganache and I'm not a huge fan of chocolate and lemon um, but you'd be surprised actually how many people order that combination at the bakery and every time I do I'm like oof are you sure about that <laughs> <laughs> so I'm basically doing what's called a crumb coat and this is going to help the ganache um, you know, coat on nicely, smoothly. It's also going to prohibit any crumbs from coming out onto the final icing. So as you see, this is a time consuming process here. And then once again, after I do the whole crumb coating, I'm gonna pop it in the freezer again. And that's going to firm everything up and get it ready to be iced with the ganache. Which is basically what I have on the table there is that finished crumb coated cake that is ready for the ganache coating. Which I have here. This over here is actually a um, cooling rack that doubles as a glazing rack. transfer my whole cake onto the glazing rack. I do have my ganache already melted to a pourable consistency. And you do need to make the whole recipe of ganache, guys, um, because as you see, more than half of it goes onto the paper underneath. And it is reusable. I was just going to ask yeah. you. Yeah. So once, uh, you know, whatever excess drips down, you can go ahead and scrape that up off the paper and reuse the ganache. As you see, what I'm doing here with my spatula is sort of like creating a dam to get those edges that may not get it just from pouring straight on. So I sort of, if that makes any sense what I'm doing here, see that? Yep. Same thing over here. It didn't quite get it from the pouring, so I just sort of do that. Am I missing any spots? Yeah. A little bit in that one. So see how I do that? All right, so a little bit back here. All right. So I can take this right away and now transfer it back to my serving platter. This can be quite messy work, guys. All right, now as this starts to set, and it will set quickly because the cake underneath was cold, it did just come out of the freezer. I have my trusty fork. 
which is what's going to make the designs of sort of like what a log looks like. Hmm. These are, this is like my favorite part of the decorating and, or whatever. What's that, watching the little tricks? No, it's just the little tricks I think make it really come together, yeah. you know? It's like... Yeah, definitely. I mean, you saw the difference before I actually ran the fork through it and it was like, oh wow, that's nice, but then look at this. Right. This is really like the added touch. This is like um, the rings on the tree when you right. cut a tree. Shows how old the tree is, right? All right, so there's that. And I mean, we're pretty much in the home stretch now, guys. Um, now you are going to grab your meringue mushrooms that you made last week or that I made last week. Honestly, I think this is why most people buy the Yule log is because of the mushrooms. Hmm. They really, I mean, it does really, um, it, it does really add something to it, I think. Oh, and you sell this in the store. We do, yeah. I sell a lot of these for Christmas. We um, kind of decorate it with this little plastic poinsettia. And then I also put a little pics in here. Santa and Frosty. Hmm. You know, I mean, you don't have to do this part of it, but I kind of do like it. Yeah, that's cute. And then we'll do a last edition of some snow on our Yule log. Wow, that went faster than I thought. I thought that it wasn't was, bad. Yeah, that wasn't bad at all. Um, you know, don't expect, guys, that it's going to go that fast for you at home. I did have a lot of this stuff prepped in stages. Um, but as long as you do what I say and in stages get this stuff into the freezer, it's going to be so much easier to work with. Be sure to get to the blog at woodlandbakeryblog.com and read first what I say about constructing this whole uh, fabulous cake before you attempt it. Get your mise en place together, get all your recipes ready, and then go for it and let's see what you can come up with. Make sure to share with us on Facebook and don't forget I'm on Instagram, guys.